In today's video, I'll be showing you how to draw a Japanese style crane. What is happening guys? I'm Daggett. This is Daggett Designs. Welcome back to a new video and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, like I said, I'll be showing you how to draw a Japanese style crane. I'm going to try and make this sort of as traditional as possible. We're going to do a traditional Japanese style crane together. Without further ado, let's go to the table and to the overhead. Okay guys, welcome back to the table. So I'm going to be starting off with a few supplies here. We've got an A4 sheet of sketch paper that I have folded in half to give us a five in size. I've also got this uh, sketchbook that I do my class notes in. So I'll be doing some notes on this one for you today as well. I of course have a mechanical pencil for sketching our design and an eraser in case we need it. Okay, so we're starting this one off landscape and you're gonna take your mechanical pencil and get to work. Of course, you can use a regular sketching pencil if that's what you have. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in an oval shape and it's actually going to be kind of an egg shape so it's going to be slightly smaller towards the front and wider towards the back now you're going to go ahead and drop in a center line on this just coming across the back of it like that and we're going to follow this center line up and forward with an s curve like that going up and around the back this is going to give us structure for the body and the neck. At the end of the neck, you're just going to drop in an oval about that big, and that will represent the head. The head of the bird will be quite small. To drop in a shape for your wings, you're going to come in from about, I don't know, a third of the body here. Come out in this direction. Round that off. So there's a bit of a corner there, but you're just rounding that corner off slightly. Bring it all the way out. Bring a curved line back around. And then an intersecting curved line back into the body, just like that. And you're going to add a few curved lines on the inside of this as guidelines as well. Just like that. For the other wing, we're doing the exact same uh, sort of shape. The only difference is we're going to cut it back short a little bit like this and our overlaps are gonna happen a lot closer together and your guidelines will sit in just like that. To draw in a shape for your tail, you're basically going to come off your center line and on a diagonal upward angle and you're gonna bring a line that curves around like that and you can double up on this also, just like that. In drawing in space for where the feet will go, you're going to drop down to the bottom of the tail here. Just draw a line out with a ball at the end. And go one, two, three, and four for the back claw there. And we'll come up in this way as well. And go one, two, three, and four. And these are very similar to how we drew claws for the eagle and very similar to how we did them for the traditional style raven. There's a few minor variations which I will go through. Okay, working in here on the head and the neck area, we're gonna use our little oval shape that we drew to start drawing in a face and a beak and all that. So you're gonna start by just drawing in a little curved line like this. That'll indicate where your eye will go. And that's gonna be a big almond shape like this with a smaller almond shape inside of it. That's literally all we're doing for the eye. The way that we color it will be to leave a highlight and it will be solid black on the inside like that. Now coming from about this point here, you're gonna bring another curved line forward that intersects at some point with this top line that we drew. That's gonna give us a line for the top of our beak which we bring down and back. You can drop down behind this and bring another small curved line forward for the bottom half of the beak. To complete the head, you're just gonna bring a line up and around 
that will join into the neck. Now to draw our neck shape in, you're gonna drop down from the head a little bit, strengthen our top line slightly. And from the bottom of the chin here, you're gonna come around like this. I like to add a few loose feathers in just by doing these little short strokes. You're gonna start sort of thinner towards the top and it's gonna curve down and get wider as it goes into the bottom of the chest of the bird here. But you're just following the shape of this S curve along the bottom line there as well. Okay, following along from this, there's a bit of pattern work here on the neck and the head. So you're just gonna come up from these feathers that we drew, these loose feathers. You're gonna do a little wiggly line and that's gonna drop down the neck. And just before it touches into the body, it's just gonna link up with the center line like that. This will make more sense once we start painting it. The last thing we're gonna do on the head here is come around to the back and just do some little loose feather lines as the top of the head will have a different color to it. I just wanna separate that with these loose little feathers. You can also add a small nostril to your beak if you'd like. To continue the pattern that we have on the neck coming down, you're gonna cut it off at about this point, swoop up and around like this, onto this, up to the center line where it'll dip back in, then coming out from the center line and back out into the neck like that. You'll understand when we start blending and shading this, but this is a bit of pattern work. So just coming up from the neck to connect these two points, you're just going to put in some fine feathering texture, which are just these little lines like this. And you'll see me do a lot of those in this design and I've done them in previous designs, including the Foo Dog tutorial we did last week, which was doing these long hair strokes. The only difference is you'll do these a fair bit shorter. I'll leave a link in the description to that tutorial below. Okay, we're just jumping over to the sketchbook now so that I can do some notes for you. So I'll show you guys how to draw the wings to start with. First off, we're gonna put in the foundation shapes. So just coming down with that angled line, curving it off on the bend, bringing the wing out like this, curving back to about halfway, and then intersecting this with a secondary curve. Then what you can do is double up this top line a little bit. Okay. Add a semicircle on the inside of this and then do another row of these uh, overlapping sort of curve lines. All right, so in terms of adding detail to this, it's a little bit more involved than say an eagle or a crow, like when you're doing it in that traditional style. We're gonna go in and add a bit more detail. So I'm gonna strengthen up this top line and coming from the tip of this area here, we're gonna do our fine feather lines. So these are just overlapping small curved lines that overlap with each other. And when you do them sort of softly like this, they look like really soft, small feathers or fur. Jumping up into this main area, I might do another row of these little soft feathers and you can do as many or, of little, or as little of these as you would like. Okay, this next section, the semicircle here, I'm doing normal sort of scale style feathers. So I covered this in the crow tutorial, but these feathers kind of look like fish scales and they're done in a very similar manner to fish scales. The only thing I don't ever do when I do these, I don't measure them out. I want them to be a little bit more random. When you do scales, you want them to be in a really neat pattern and grouping. With feathers, I kind of want them to be a little bit more random. So with these next two rows, we're going to do straight feathers. So we're just coming out and curving back in. Coming out to a bit of a point, curving back in. And you're just gonna do this down one row. When you reach this smallest point, you're gonna follow it out and start getting bigger again. following the guidelines that you put down, just like that. Now for this larger roll of feathers, this is where it gets a little more interesting. You're gonna come out like this. As you come back in, 
you're just going to put in these little peaks. Quite, quite randomly like that. Just coming straight up, curving back and dropping in some of these little peaks. And this will give the texture to the feathers. And you'll do that for the first four or five, uh, four, three or four feathers. And then I'll just start cutting them back the same way we did the smaller feathers up top. Once you reach this next row of feathers, you're going to put in each feather the same way that we have been, like this. And then you're gonna do a double line on the inside of each of these. Now when I'm drawing Japanese style cranes, that inner portion gets shaded in black, solid black. And that's basically how we draw the crane wing. And that's basically my notes on how to draw the crane wing. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit of work on drawing the tail feathers in as well. So the tail feathers aren't too complicated, but there are two rows to it. There's a bottom row and a top row or whichever way you're looking at it from whatever perspective you're looking at it. So the first row comes straight off the body. I'm going to do like a center line, a curved line this way and a curved line that way. And this first row is basically like leaf shapes, like this. And they overlap in this direction. And then the other ones overlap in the opposite direction. So the, the center one overlaps all of the other ones. And I just add a center line to each of these. That's our first row of feathers uh, for the tail. The second row you're going to put underneath this, but I'm going to do it in a separate way. So it's a bit easier to follow. So we're drawing the center line in, cutting it back on both sides and drawing in our leaf shapes. Again, overlapping them on either side. Like this. And then for each of these, you're going to put in a center vein that doubles up. So we'll double up on that one on that one and you're going to come in and add these center veins on the feathers like this and then I like to double up the outer line of these feathers because just like the wings we just did the center portion of these is going to be solid black as well when we paint this now of course you can go ahead and add a couple of extra feathers behind this if you'd like this just bulks it out a little bit more and makes it look a bit more natural. It depends how many of these you want to include. So these are basically the notes on this lesson. So these are available in the class notes section of your memberships if you are signed up as a member. It's only $3 a month to receive all of the class notes. So that'll include this and also the full sketch once we have finished as well. All right, now that we've taken care of the class notes, you'll know how to draw the wings and the tail. And you're just going to slot them into the guidelines. Any areas where they join into the body here and here, I've just done those small wispy uh, soft feathers to give it a look of soft and fluffiness as it sort of joins back up into the body. So we're going to do a couple more points on the body and then get into the feet. So my last points on doing the body is I would just put in these little scale feathers across the back of the body here. Very similar to what we did in the wings and again you know not being too precise with it you can just relax be a bit loose with it and don't stress about them being perfect size and proportion because they're feathers and not scales all right last thing we're going to focus on is the feet i always find it easier to turn my page so i will do so basically you could do a straight line up to that bowl and coming around it you're just going to add a knuckle to the each of each of your fingers to the middle of each of your fingers I should say come up around the ball area and put in your little claw or talon and then link back up with the little W curves you'll notice that the crane claws are a little bit skinnier 
and smaller than the eagle claws. You want these feet to have long skinny fingers. You're going to do this for the remaining claws on your crane foot here, the front of the claw. So we're going to bring that up and into there, dropping it straight back down. And this portion is like the inside of the foot that we're seeing. Just like that. To join it back into the body, we'll just do a little wavy line like that. Of course, you can detail this out with those little lines across the back that give it that slightly scaly texture that we have on the back of, you know, bird feet. Okay, and in terms of drawing or start doing our sketch, that's basically it. You can go ahead and add a background and add cherry blossoms or add this crane into whatever environment your design is. In this case, I'm going to leave it as is, transfer it to my watercolor paper using a light pad and we'll get into painting this one. If you don't have a light pad and you've got some watercolor paper you want to move it to, you can tape it up to a window and trace through there, or you can put it on a glass table and shine a torch up through the table and trace like that. And I'm going to see you guys in the next part. All right, once you have transferred your design to the appropriate paper, depending on what you're coloring with, it is ready to color. I've just gone ahead and done solid black in those few areas I mentioned during the notes section and we're gonna to get to painting this one. So we're not using many colors. We are using Liquitex acrylic inks. These, in my opinion, are some of the best inks or fluid acrylics, if you'd like to call them that, for painting Tattoo Flash. It's what I use for all of my professional and portfolio work. So the colors I have here are carbon black. I've also got a yellow orange. I've got a, this is a phthalo blue, but I've watered it down. So I've got a little bottle of water here and I've just filled the well up with water and put one drop of the blue. I want the lightest blue I can get, uh, you know, nearly possible for doing this design. And I've got a little bit of pyrrole red. You'll notice my ink levels are really low and that's because I'm not using a lot of ink for this one. We're going pretty light with the colors. Now I do want to quickly mention there's an affiliate link in the description down below where you can purchase Liquitex acrylic inks if you'd like to use them. Please do purchase them from my link. It is an affiliate link and I do earn a small, small commission from this. Along with this, I have a glass of water for washing my brushes out and blending. And I've also got two brushes, a inking brush for applying the ink to the paper and a blending brush, which I'll be using for washing out some of the colors. Okay, now as with all of my designs, it's black shading first. So you're gonna go ahead and load your brush up with some of your carbon black, if you are painting with acrylic inks. And I'm gonna come down from behind the face here and fill in this bit of pattern. The Japanese cranes have this black uh, sort of pattern on their neck of black feathers. And I just like to do it solid black down until we get to the back. So we're just coming down solid black like this. When you get to the portion where you have that center line coming up the middle, I bring the black out like this, away from the center line slightly. And then I'll take my blending brush and I'll just feather that out a little bit. So this way we have a nice smooth gradient from black up to that center line. From here, I'm gonna continue doing my black underneath this. And there's gonna be a little bit more shading in the next part. So just bringing your black up and around and see where these soft feathers are. We're gonna bring the black just across the top of these like that. And then take our blending brush and again, feather that edge out to a gray and just blending down and into our soft feathers there. Now from here, you can take solid carbon black and I'll start from the other side of our center line just there. Just coming up and around the back, filling in the rest of our pattern. Just like this.
Okay, now you'll notice there's this awkward little transition in the middle there. So I'm going to bring up the black a little bit further like this. And then once again with my blending brush, just come in and feather that edge up to the center line like that, just to get rid of that awkward transition. And we're going to go into our pyrrol red. I'm just going to get a bit of pyrrol red loaded onto the tip of my brush here. And there's only two spots of pyrrol red, so it's quite simple. You're just going to come in above the eye here and do that little bit of red feathering on top of the head, just like that. And where those soft feathers are, you can come in with your blending brush and very gently feather that edge. The only other spot of pyrrol red that we're going to do solid is inside these feathers on the tail. You're just going to do pyrrol red on the inside of those little uh, veins. Now you'll notice these look really thick because I'm going over the top of the black a little bit. Once that settles, you'll only be able to see the red. Okay, now I missed a little bit of black shading on the claws black back here. So I'm going to go back into my carbon black. And we're going to do a little bit of black just coming off the bottom edge of this claw here. On the ankle area. Just like that. And then taking the blending brush to bring that up the ankle and blend it out nicely. This way you get a nice grey up through your foot and you can just move that around a little bit to get grey in some other areas that you'd like. You can go ahead and do this for the other foot as well. Just adding a bit of black to your ankle area and then gently moving that around just blending it out to fill in some shadows on the feet there. Okay, before we start uh, shading the body, we're going to go ahead and just take our orange yellow here. You can use that to paint your beak and we're just going to do solid yellow for the beak. And we're going to do the same thing for the claws at the back, just doing solid yellow over the top of your black shading and leaving little areas of white if you'd like to have a highlight or a little skin break in there. Now, I think usually cranes actually have black feet, but as I covered in the crow or raven tutorial, this is about stylizing a little bit. You know, you want it to look nice aesthetically and doing solid black feet or gray feet with just a bit of shading can look good also, but I like to do nice vibrant colors and you know, give the design a little bit more flair. So feel free to customize your designs a little bit and it's okay to sort of change colors every now and then. Okay, now onto shading the wings and the main body. I'm gonna turn the page a little bit this way and we're taking a little bit of that blue wash that we made up, just using blue and some water. And we're coming up from the belly here with a shadow that comes up And we'll just feather off that edge a little bit to soften it, just like that. So it's a very, very light blue, but once you've done enough of it, it's going to look like shadowing on your body and wings. And because this is a primarily a white bird, the feathers are mostly white, then using blue as your shadow tone helps to, I think, make things look a bit more dynamic and less flat. So coming in on the top of the wings here with a bit of our blue tone. You can blend that through just using a bit of water on the end of your brush. You don't really need to use a blending brush. You can continue with your inking brush and just dip it in the water because this is such a light blue. You're going to go ahead and fill in each of your scale feathers using this light blue color. And I like to leave little skin breaks. It's not super necessary with this light blue because you can Sort of barely see it until it all comes together anyways, but I like to sort of leave little skin breaks on each of the scale feathers as well. You can take a little bit of that color underneath and do this roll of feathers underneath the scale feathers. Again, just sort of rinsing the brush and washing that out towards the tip of the feathers where you'll want them to be more white. 
like that. And then for the bigger feathers, you can use straight blue and just sort of drag it from the back of the feather forwards, allowing it to transition to white. Now you can go ahead and put a bit of blue on this part of the body here, where there'll be a bit of shadowing. Just draw that back. And I'll put a little bit of blue at the very back of the body where we join into the tail feathers here, just going straight over the top of your scaling feathers. And then blending that blue forward. And for these little areas underneath here, we're gonna just put a bit of blue shadowing on them as well. Now for doing your tail feathers, you take some blue, come up in the center of each of them, and just leave a little white border around each of these feathers after coming up down the center there. And again, you don't have to be too precise with this either. You can be quite loose. It is a very, very light color. Now in terms of painting this guy, that is basically it. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my seal on here. You can go ahead and sign your artwork, of course. That's usually the last thing you should do, is just sign your artwork at the end. And just like that, we have a traditional Japanese style crane. That is it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you followed along and learned something. I think our crane design came out really nice. It looks traditional and those nice blue shadow tones give the white a little bit extra volume and shape so that it doesn't look too flat. Make sure to head over to Facebook and Instagram at Dagger Designs if you'd like to see my online portfolio or see any behind the scenes work or video updates for the YouTube channel. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And last but not least, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It's down there. Hit the notification bell so you never miss videos when they come out. And that having been said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye.